Greetings, all. Welcome to Aquarian Diary. I'm your host, John Irving. It is January 28th, 2024. What I'm going to talk about here today may seem a little bit out of left field. I actually have a long list of really interesting topics I want to publish. I've gotten a lot of downloads recently, many of which are really interesting. Especially in the last half of 2023, I had a lot of challenging Saturn transits, a whole slew of them. And Saturn is transiting my 12th house, which in and of itself is rather challenging. So it's been very hard and very interesting at the same time. Now, one of those transits that has been going on has been transiting Saturn, conjuncting my natal Chiron, natal Chiron in Pisces in the 12th. If you're a student of astrology, you'll have a sense of what that's about. This is an underrated transit in terms of its effects. This is very much a kind of woe is me period, and it can be very emotionally debilitating, and it can feel like the world is against you. This only happens every 28 or 29 years, so it's not common. Chiron represents our core wounding, whether we are aware of it or not. This wounding is often associated with traumas that occurred in our formative years, typically with family, who we also have a lot of karma with. But it also deals with past life traumas and wounding. It's a wound that we can never get rid of, but that we can heal. And as one matures, and we have mastered that wounding, there's the potential for us to help others who have suffered similar wounding, to become the wounded healer. That's a real nutshell explanation. One of the things about our core wounding is that we tend not to want to look at it because it is too provocative or triggering. Most of us prefer to have pleasant experiences. <laughs> of course, <laughs> why would we want to suffer? And yet, if we don't confront our wounding, it will victimize us and limit our potential. And it'll keep getting triggered and showing up in all kinds of weird ways. And the less conscious we are of our wounding, the less we have mastered it, the more vulnerable we are to it disrupting our life and our potential. So ultimately, if we want to ascend, we have to confront our wounding or do our shadow work, however you want to phrase it. It's absolutely critical. I've had that experience many times where I have been cruising along thinking everything is great and then something will trigger me and it will throw me off course. When Saturn makes aspects to Chiron, it demands that we approach our wounding in a very realistic, practical, and mature way. Saturn does not let us off the hook. Now, I'm not young, so I have had this transit occur before. When Saturn conjuncts your Chiron, it's not pleasant because a lot of your wounding will be triggered and brought into your conscious awareness. And like I said, most of us don't like to focus on these kinds of things. It's not fun. It's difficult. It's threatening. It's disturbing. It's uncomfortable. Who wants to be weak and vulnerable? That's the core of this experience is recognizing your weakness and your vulnerability. But then the question is, what do you do about it? If you're more mature, and I am at least by age, then you confront your wounding and your weaknesses and your vulnerabilities honestly and directly. The more confident and fearless you are about doing that, the more you will get done. Now, the 12th house where this is occurring for me can deal with a lot of the non-material aspects of reality. So this can be like tapping into the collective trauma or wounding of society and reality. And there's a lot of darkness there. There's a lot of fear. There's a lot of trauma. Why am I explaining all this? 
because it's drawn to my awareness how our society tends to avoid dealing with or confronting or even acknowledging these kinds of matters. Take, for example, how we deal with things like homelessness. Right now, there are people on the streets who at some point in the past had a family, a career, a three-bedroom home in the suburbs, and then they find themselves in circumstances where they lose everything and they have no choice but to live on the streets. It could be because, for example, they couldn't pay medical bills or they got bankrupted because of a health condition or something like that. Or maybe they had psychological problems or drug addiction or whatever it was. And then our culture in many ways just kind of pretends that this isn't actually happening, that that can't happen to me, which is one of the ways that this gets perpetuated, this cycle, because nobody wants to think that that could happen to them. Or we victim blame, which is a very low consciousness projection. But my whole point is, is that at some point, a lot of these people were just like us. And then they find themselves in these extremely challenging, difficult, and uncomfortable situations. And we as a society kind of sweep them under the rug, if not criminalize them. And this is a very profound disservice and injustice to these people. It's like kicking them when they're down. It's horrible. These are the most vulnerable people in our society. And the true measure of our society is how we treat our most vulnerable people. If we do not treat them with respect and compassion, we are not an evolved society, regardless of what anyone says. There are many seniors right now who retired thinking that they had enough money to survive through their retirement years. And because of inflation and higher interest rates, the skyrocketing cost of housing and health care, they're finding that they're not prepared in a way they thought they were. So these people, in fact, are now becoming vulnerable and marginalized as well, many of them. But this also occurs on the spiritual dimensions where people who have experiences with dark psychic phenomenon are marginalized, rejected, or ostracized. We portray these kinds of things a lot in film, think the horror genre. And people are fascinated by this, of course. But in reality, people who experience these kinds of things can't talk about it because they will be perceived as being crazy or threatened with being locked up in an institution. Some people are mentally unstable. Let's be clear about that. But not everyone. And I myself have had many, many encounters with the darker aspects of reality for whatever reason, going back to my childhood. And I have personally taken measures over the years to protect myself from those kinds of situations. I think it's just simply because I'm psychically open or wired in a lot of ways that allows me to be able to perceive these kinds of things. So what I'm saying is that sometimes these things are real. I'm explaining all this because there needs to be a place for people who experience these kinds of things to be able to share those experiences and learn how to manage them without fear of being ostracized or stigmatized. In fact, the worst thing that can happen here is that these people get increasingly isolated. You do not want to be in a state of fear when you are confronting these kinds of energies. It makes you more vulnerable. My point is that people these days are more open about psychic phenomenon. This is something that we can't explain scientifically or completely rationally. The majority of people are in complete denial about this kind of stuff. Let's face it, in the not too distant past, if not still to this day, people who experienced these kinds of things would have been thrown into mental institutions, if not burned at the stake. That's how bad it is. People who are prone to these kinds of things need to learn ways of dealing with them 
that are constructive and positive. And that is possible. But it's not likely to occur if our society just completely rejects the reality of this. I am not in any way condoning darkness or the deliberate pursuit of it at all. I myself have made a solemn oath to be aligned with the path of light and truth. I am unwaveringly committed to that path, period. However, we are not being of service to our brothers and our sisters if we deny their experiences and stigmatize them. Now, some people are having these kinds of experiences for karmic reasons, but even that can be addressed. So I'm sharing this today rather unexpectedly because it came up for me very clearly and I had some insights into this that I wanted to share with you. It's an uncomfortable topic, but it's something that ultimately our society will need to confront in a constructive, compassionate way. We are all members of the human family, and it behooves us, for all of us, to be uplifted and healed. There is collective karma and trauma that humanity has to resolve, or it will continue to occur. And the vast majority of us do not want to continue experiencing collective trauma, whether it's through war or on the psychic levels. Part of our collective upliftment in the Aquarian age will be for those who have the courage and the fortitude and the wisdom to help humanity to constructively move forward on these levels. So we have to help anyone in need, and I have made the point here before that we need to help our most vulnerable people. Pretending that they don't exist or that their reality is invalid is choosing ignorance and its folly. In the episode description, I will link to some other episodes I have published that are related to this theme. Again, for more detail, check the episode description for other episodes or articles that are related or that I mentioned. And if you're interested in a reading with me, I'll put a link to that as well. I have a 20% off special on currently. Many sincere thanks to everyone who supports me, especially my YouTube members. Thank you very much. Take care, all the best, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye for now.